Hello everyone! So, as you can tell, this is not Mr. Crankyface speaking, but his substitute for this video voiceover. I'm Mrs. Crankyface, and I will do my best to keep your attention through this video. If you'd like for me to do more voiceover for Mr. Crankyface in the near future, please leave a comment down below. Cheers! So, back on the buggy, version 2. Mr. Crankyface has been working on this on and off for a long while now, and it's been roughly 5 million different little changes, just a low estimate. It's been a lot of work to first of all make this stay in one piece and secondly be fun and easy-ish to drive. It was in pretty good shape roughly a year ago, feels like it's been forever by now. Anyhow, we were out at a parking lot and giving it some gas. Previously it had been struggling with extreme oversteer, which at this time had been corrected with steering angles front and rear and better tires on the rear. The wheels require some spacers that converts the hubs to a hex and lets you attach regular RC wheels. You can print the spacers at different lengths to adjust for different sizes of rims. We got this up to around 60 km per hour without any problems. Previously even 40 was a constant struggle to control. This was also a moderately heavy cell phone taped to it to measure the speed. With a higher gear ratio, it'd go faster, but you'd be sacrificing a lot of low-end smoothness, at least with this motor and ESC combo. As a neat little end to the day, Mr. Crankyface decided to say hello to his old nemesis, the curb. This was a mix of sudden understeer and just plain poor driving, but didn't result in any major damage at least. Sometime after this, he managed to flatline the 2S battery and instead bought a 3S LiPo. And this is where the trouble began. It worked pretty good at the start with the 3D printed tires as they didn't give you crazy levels of grip on the harder surfaces we were testing on. With this terrain and tire combo, throttle was rarely above 60% to avoid excessive wheel spin. There's just so much more power now compared to the 2S battery. We found a nicer spot with sandy terrain and let it rip. Overall, it's pretty controllable as long as you work with the throttle just right. However, this stress test revealed some more issues. First, there was a lot of sand and dirt around the gears, which easily gets jammed in there if you're unlucky. Second, with the increased traction, one of the gears ended up stripping, and not in a good way. Mr. Crankyface think it broke both due to the increased traction, but also because the gear teeth gap was too big, giving it only partial tooth engagement. Previously, he had remade the gearbox to allow for quick swaps of the bigger gear, that way you don't need to disassemble the whole main gearbox. After this run, he also designed a dust cover for the exposed gears to stop small rocks from getting into them. He also made the tooth engagement adjustable and replaced the gears. It ran pretty good for a while until he put on some real tires on it and started really pushing it again. This short run is pretty much all we got out of these gears, but it seems so incredibly promising now. After this, he redesigned and reprinted the entire rear end, including the gearbox. This lets you run wider gears, which seems to have solved it for now. He's driven it quite hard on the tarmac for 40 minutes, so far without any breakdowns. Stay tuned for the next update on this thing, and feel free to drop a comment, a thumbs up, or subscribe if you wish to see more of Mr. Cranky Face's content and help the channel to grow. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. And don't forget, give the substitute some love. Cheers!